And today, let me tell you about my Jesus. That's what I do every Sunday. And it's not that hard, folks, to tell you about Jesus. It's really not. And so I'm going to begin telling you about Jesus with a passage, passage from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 13 through 22. And we're going to have this up here so that you can... I know you're looking at that title. Ooh, is he going there? Post-election realities. Some of you came because you saw that title. Some people... We've got a lot of people watching today, Glenn, a lot. So it must be the title, I guess. Hopefully it's more than that. So here we go. This is the word of the Lord. But now in Christ Jesus, you who are once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances, that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. The Word of God for the people of God. So no matter the results of the recent elections, the reality is, is that our world is divided. Divided by nations, ethnicities, skin color, languages, genders, politics, religions, economics, entertainment, sex, issues of right and wrong, and justice. Really, just about anything you can think of. Now, last night, Karen and I had the honor of being invited to a birthday celebration. Y'all have, may have met our, one of our newer families that joined the church. It's Emmanuel, Precious, and their children. Listen to this. Amazing Grace, Glory, and Divine. They're from Nigeria. And they moved here so that Precious could get her law degree at Georgia State. And they joined our church. Now, they're not here this morning. They've not missed a Sunday since they joined the church. But they went to Columbus today to be with their family who lives in Columbus to celebrate her birthday some more. And their birthday celebrations are really what ours should be. I'm serious. So she had family members come. One of her sisters came all the way from London. And she's an RN. She's a nurse in London. Other family members came from Nigeria. Others came from other parts of the United States. And she has a brother, an older brother, who lives in Columbus, Georgia, not far from here, about two hours. And they were there, and so were members of her class where she's getting her law degree from Georgia State. We had people from Iran, and that is how you say it. It's not Iran. Iran is doing this. <laughs> Iran, Egypt, isn't that cool? Okay. India, Nepal, Nigeria, of course. I believe I mentioned that. Let's see where else. Those are the main places. And... We were there, Karen and I, and Christina Porter. A lot of y'all know Christina. She was there as well. And we're gathered with all these people from all over the world. And as a pastor, I have learned to be prepared to marry, bury, preach, teach, and pray at the snap of a finger. You keep that in your back pocket so you're ready at all times. So as they've gathered together... They ask family members and everybody that's there, one at a time, to stand and tell Precious how precious she is and say something positive about her. That's in their tradition from being from Nigeria. So everybody did that. Even the kids did it. And there was probably 30-some people there. So that took a little while. And it was, I mean, it was amazing. And then Emmanuel, isn't that a great name, God with us? He says, Pastor, would you say a few words? I had no preparation for that. And so I stand up, and I just say what God put on my heart. 
I said, folks, standing in the midst of this group of people, there's a lot of love here and there's a lot of joy. And I believe I'm getting a taste of heaven right now with all these ethnicities and cultures and races and all of that, all the stuff that divides us. We were one in that moment and it was beautiful. And so what God put in my heart was to share about love. And then we had that love, so I quoted all of 1 Corinthians 13. And then I did a blessing over Precious and Emmanuel and their family and everybody that was there. And it was very moving. And found out there were people of different religions there. There were even people there of no religion, no real faith. And two of the young law students, I'm talking about one of them, he has like five law degrees, and he's from India. And uh, the other guy was from Iran, Iran, not Iran. And they came up to me, and they said, we had chills when you were doing that. Where did those words come from? I said, they came from the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. That was one of the most powerful things I've ever heard. I said, well, that's because it's the Word of God. It wasn't what I said. It's what God said through Paul, the apostle. And it opened up some communication. You see, the Word of God never falls void. And the Word of God is meant to unite us and bring us together. That's why it's so important that the Word of God be etched on your hearts. That you know the Word of God. I'm not talking about just know it intellectually, but that you know it in your heart of hearts, where it flows freely. You don't have to quote it perfectly, the way God puts it in your spirit. And so back to this divisiveness in our world. There's so much going on right now. So much unjust talk. There's so much talk about inclusion, but yet there's so much exclusion. You know what I'm saying? And additionally, people say they want a society of, of justice and equality and inclusion, but they don't want people from other groups coming in and possibly changing the general culture or the identity of their group or not looking like them or acting like them, saying the things that they say. They're selective even about, even resistant to newcomers. So our society continues on its divided state over a myriad of issues. But last night I got a taste of heaven where there's no division and where people of all cultures and races gather together and they're one. And we don't look at each other as being different, but being one and the same in the presence of the risen Messiah. Because of what Jesus has done, society, society has been radically impacted in that now, in Christ, all those divisive issues are supposed to be done away with, except one, those who are in Christ and those who are not. <laughs> Jesus alone, God incarnate, Savior of the world, he tore down the dividing walls of hostility. And next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent. Can you believe it? It's already Advent. I feel like we just put away the Christmas tree and the Advent wreath and we're pulling it right back out. It just happens, right? The older we are, the quicker it gets here. The younger we are, it can't get here soon enough. If Iani was sitting right there, she'd be like, Hallelujah, amen. It's true, folks. It's true, we anticipate that. And so Advent... And I've got some handouts if you want to take it with you today to get an extra jump on Advent. In the Latin word, it means adventus, arrival, coming, anticipation of the Messiah. And we celebrate his love and his joy and his peace and his hope. And we'll light candles and it'll be all special. And that's what starts next week. And he came to break down the divisive walls that exist. He is the Savior of the world. We are members of God's household. He has claimed us and he's called us. Now with his blood, he purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. That's Revelation 5, 9. He purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. And last night I sat in the room with people from all over, different nations and places, and it was powerful. As a born-again child of God, 
as born-again children of God. Not only are we different persons individually, but we are different people collectively. Now we are one people, no longer divided by the uniqueness, diversity, and distinctives of how God made us in our place in this world, but instead we are one people in Christ, and the only division is between those who are saved and those who are perishing, those who believe and those who disbelieve, those who are in Christ and those who are not, those who are obedient and those those who disobey. As it is written, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Woo! Galatians 3.28 Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. He is our all in all. This is truth, folks. This truth, this reality of a new identity individually and collectively is to impact how we relate with the world around us. As the Apostle Paul wrote, so from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, is anyone a new creation in Christ? The old is gone. The new has come. We are new creations. We'll never be the same. We do a 180 degree turn, not a 360, because the 360, though it looks good when somebody dunks the ball into the 360, you're just going around in circles. But how many of you are walking in life like this. Seriously. You are. Instead of being focused and you're turning from that old way to the new way. I am a new creation. Brand new. Bought with a price. And I'm claimed. I'm claimed by the blood of Jesus and I'm set free. And I'm one with my brothers and sisters. That's what Christ did when he came. And he did it immediately, and he came as a little baby. We love that imagery, don't we? We've got a little baby in our presence today. Magnolia Grace. It's two Sundays in a row. I said her name because it's beautiful. Magnolia Grace Smith. It's going to be a wonderful monogram, isn't it? Certainly. Listen to this. 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3. This is powerful scripture. Brothers and sisters... I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. Indeed, you're still not ready. You are still worldly. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? We are no longer worldly, mere humans who are defined by all the differences between us. If we're in Christ, we're no, more, no longer worldly. We're one. Do not say, I am only human. You're not. You're more than that. The living God breathed into you His breath, His Spirit, his life. You're not just flesh and blood. But the way that the world is acting is all about the flesh. They're not acting in the spiritual realm or the spiritual world. And that's why you've come because, as Doug said, you want to be, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit because you realize I'm weak in my own flesh. I'm going to fail. I'm going to mess up. You know, folks, even when we're keeping our eyes in fixed and focused on Christ, we're still going to take our eyes off sometime. We're still going to mess up. That's going to happen. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be easy. Christ never said it was going to be easy. But he's there to nudge us and remind us that's not the right decision to make. You should not have said that. You should not have treated her like that. To remind us and understand it's okay to say, I'm sorry or I was wrong. And don't include the but. Just say, I was wrong. I messed up. Will you forgive me? You see, that's what Christ does. He brings unity. 
compassion, forgiveness, empathy, all those wonderful things, as well as the love, joy, peace, and hope that we'll celebrate in the next four Sundays starting next week. It's vital today that we, as God's people, awaken to the reality of who Jesus Christ is, what he has done for us, what and who we are in light of these truths, and how these alone are to define and direct us in how we relate with and engage the world around us. We cannot be vessels of hate. We can't. It's okay for us to have an unpublished thought and take a deep breath before we say something that's going to hurt or cause harm. Lord, speak through me. Speak through me. And it may be that you say nothing at all, and that's okay. And then there are other cases where you need to stand your ground and speak the truth. And you need to do that, folks. When he convicts you to do that, you do it. And he'll be your voice of truth and the voice of reason. That's biblical, by the way. He will. We are so much more than one born again child of God. One new creature but rather we are a whole new society, a kingdom, family of born-again new creatures entering to a oneness with God and with our fellow Christians that is meant to be a witness to the world. We're meant to be a witness to the world. If we're like the world and acting like the world, then what's the difference? Do you think you're going to be able to make a difference for Christ if you're like the world and you look like the world? We don't need all that stuff that the world is throwing at us. The church doesn't need that. We don't need to piecemeal the gospel. We don't need to compromise. We don't need all the lights, camera, action, and all that. We're not here to entertain. We are here to bring people into the authentic encounter of the Holy Spirit of God where their hearts are being transformed, not just changed, because change is not anything. You go right back to those old habits again. But transformation means metamorphosis. I will never be the same that God is circumcising my heart. He's tearing away that old callousness and bringing new life to me, abundant life. Let me tell you about my Jesus. That's what he does. Man, I got so excited today when I saw Sarah Ann and Kelly together. That's a piece of heaven right there. That's angelic. And then I look over here and Craig, Craig, I'm not going to say how Craig, how old Craig is, but if you don't look at him and you just hear him play, you think this is a 25-year-old guy playing drums. I mean, my goodness. Where's he at? He's out there. He's probably listening. Unbelievable. And then I look over here at Spencer and I, and I see the love of God on his face and the way he plays. And he looked over me a couple times. Smile. You did. I saw you. You got to be good to do that. Play and look over. And then Drew, how steadfast he is to come and play bass for us every single week. And there's no better bass player. And then Doug Allen, the gift that he is at this church, the witness that he is, and he's humble. And I know why he's humble. It's the God that lives within him, but it's because he has a wife that keeps him focused. <laughs> yes. Yeah. She does. She does. She's on our women's leadership team, and she is something else in that women rooted in Christ. And thanks be to God for her. And I praise God for that woman that sits usually right over here where they're sitting. Karen, she's down there teaching those children a song, a song that would be hard for us to learn, and the children are going to learn it and sing it. Um, that's how God is moving. He's moving through this congregation. He's moving through the leadership. He's showing us that we are one. And we as leaders, as your pastors, we must be one, equally yoked. And God has done that. Jesus prayed this. Jesus prayed, I have given them glory, the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I and them and you in me. 
so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. We are living in a world that is selfish. All about me, myself, and I. Full of bitterness and hatred. You want to see that come to fruition? Have elections. I mean, really, you see it, don't you? Our country's become so divided over political parties, over candidates, and we refer to them as them and they and those people and that party and the progressives and the conservatives and the moderates who are confused. You know, we, we do that. We classify people under those groups rather than seeing them as a child of God created in the image of God. Rather than praying for them and praying for ourselves. Lord, if I'm seeing this wrong, reveal what's right to me. You know what I'm saying? In all facets of your life, consult the Holy Spirit. Even when you go to the voting poll. Consult the Holy Spirit before and during that moment. Let Him guide you as you press that button or do that right in. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of us were looking for right ins, weren't we? Like, uh, <laughs> you know, I feel you. You're like, well, that's my choices. You really need to pray, don't you? And I found when I was voting, if I left it blank, it wouldn't let my ballot cast. So you had to. It's like, seriously, Lord? But anyway, there were right ins as well. We're living in a world that's filled with hatred. Therefore, we need to take refuge under the wings of the everlasting arms of the God of love. Let your hearts be filled with love. Last night at that birthday party, with the diversity that was there, my heart was just filled to overflowing. I mean, I became tearful as I looked around at the faces of those beautiful people from these different cultures and backgrounds. It was a glorious time to experience God's power through them. I hope that He will fill you with His love so that you can be a witness to His transforming power so that others will see Him in you and no longer see you, that you will be a fountain of blessing to all those around you, that they don't associate with you, that you with this political party or how you feel about this issue, but when they see you come and they say, that person loves Jesus. That person knows God. That person prays. That person gives. That's a generous person. You know, that person's gone through a lot, and we don't agree on everything, but she loves me, and she accepts me for who I am. We want to reflect Christ in all that we do and all that we say because we're nothing without Him. So I want us to pray. I want us to pray before our worship team leads us in a very, very special song this morning. So it's not going to be up here. This is from my heart, and I want you to pray it with me. Repeat line after line with me. I was doing premarital counseling with a couple yesterday, a young couple. She's 22. He's 24. She's a nurse. She's um, going to be an ER nurse pretty soon. And he's, he's only 24, and he's the head maintenance guy of Northside Hospital in Cherokee County. And as I was talking with them, I prayed over them. And I said, you're going to be saying vows to one another. And we're going to do the traditional vows, and they're going to repeat those vows line after line. And he said, why are we doing that? I said, because I want you to mean what you say. And I want you to say it out loud. I want you to repeat it to her as you look her in the eyes. I will love you in sickness and in health so long as we both shall live. And there's a line, a new line that's been added. I will honor you. I will support you. I will sacrifice for you. I will give for you. I'll lay my life down for you. That's the more contemporary version of the vows now. They're beautiful, aren't they? And I informed them yesterday that vows, commitments, don't contain an if. We don't, we don't write in if. I love you if. Yeah, I'll live with you 
if you do these things till death do us part. We don't include that. There's no if there. We don't love if. You know what I'm saying? So let's have this prayer together. This is a prayer of confession too. Repeat each line after me and I'll give you a time to do that. Lord, I confess that without love I am nothing. Please fill my heart with your everlasting love. God, I am yours. And I will lean on your everlasting arms. I will love like Jesus. I will put you first in my life. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence and your peace. Amen.